Can I start by asking for a show of hands from the audience? How many of you guys here have attended a folk high school or taken time off before university or know someone who has? Raise your hands. Wow, that's a lot of people. All right, put your hands down. Um, if I were to ask the same question to an audience of American students, I would get a far smaller showing of hands. According to the Nordic Institute for Studies in Innovation, Research, and Education, more than 50% of students in Norway take time off before or during university. In America, it's estimated that this number is just 2%. And take note that that's just an estimation. In reality, taking a gap year, which is what Americans call taking time off from school, is still so unconventional that no one even bothers to track how many students actually do it. So clearly, there are huge cultural differences between our two countries. Um, I first wanted to highlight that point. Um, now I'm going to backtrack a little bit and talk about um, my education and why I want more students to take time off from school and take time on in the real world. In high school, I was a straight-A student. I took the right classes. I did the right activities. Um, I had a very clear path to take. Excel in high school, graduate from a prestigious university, and get a good job. When I was in the 10th grade, this was the life that I was preparing myself for. My parents are Asian. They both hold PhDs. I knew no other way. You can imagine their surprise when, just two years later, I declared I was deferring my admission to Stanford University, one of the best schools in America. I wanted to take two years off to work full-time at an organization called UnCollege. At UnCollege, we run a gap year program that helps young people become self-directed learners. We help universities navigate the changing attitudes towards higher education. We challenge the notion that taking a traditional path is the only one to success. So how does someone like me, someone who got straight A's in high school and was supposedly thrived in an academic environment, suddenly start working for UnCollege? It seems a bit strange. I guess it all started when I realized that I wasn't as awesome as everyone kept telling me I was. In the 11th grade, I took a social justice class. Um, we read an essay called The Disadvantages of an Elite Education. In it, William Dereshowitz explains the consequences of the American education system, which implicitly prizes obedience and discipline above all else. Instead of cultivating the next generation of young leaders that America so desperately needs, what this has done instead is created a population of young people who are really good at following directions and who are really bad at thinking for themselves. After reading this essay, I was forced to take a good hard look at myself. Um, I was so used to being praised by teachers, parents, friends for my inherent leadership ability. Was it possible that I was just good at conforming to a norm? Was it possible that I had been herded into this narrow path, that I was really just an excellent sheep? Um, I was really ashamed to admit it, but yeah, I totally was. Um, I was the ultimate conformist. I spent my time figuring out how to make the grade and living up to the expectations that society set for me. And I did really well at it, but I was never really happy. So from there, I decided that I wanted to change. I didn't want to be this person anymore. Um, so I made it a point to think more critically and to make more intentional decisions about what, how, and why I wanted to learn. During my senior year of high school, I joined the UnCollege team in order to help other students do the same. I think the most intentional decision that I've made so far has been to take time off before university. To me, this seemed like the perfect compromise. I could spend time pursuing self-directed learning. And if everything failed and I fell on my ass, I could still go back to university at the end of those two years as if nothing had happened. So in my mind, it seems like a, a rational and a very risk-free decision. But when I tell my parents, they didn't think so at first. In fact, they were very worried and very reluctant to let me delay university. It was difficult for them to understand why their daughter, who had supposedly done so well in school, didn't want to be there anymore. 
what will you do? They asked me. Won't you be a year behind all of your friends? Don't you want to learn? Um, let me say my parents are awesome. Um, they were very concerned for me, but I, I had good arguments to back myself up. I explained to them that I wanted to take time off from school, not from learning. I would do plenty of that on my own, whether that meant pursuing personal projects, finding interesting internships, or traveling the world. The possibilities were endless. So why is it that students are so scared? Um, American students, after a year in college, after a year spending time in the real world, will inevitably become more mature and more interesting and more capable of making their own decisions. Universities understand this, right? It's why folk high schools exist. It's why top schools like Harvard University have for 40 years included in their letter of admission the option to defer. It's why the Massachusetts Institute of Technology allows students to defer for almost any reason. It's why Stanford University adds a deferral as an option in the drop-down menu when you matriculate to university. They know that the ability to make intentional decisions and to design your own education is incredibly important. It's called being self-directed, and it's the number one skill that the market wants. Employers seek people who can take initiative, who can manage priorities, and who can succeed in a work environment. Universities don't encourage being self-directed. Um, in fact, they discourage it. They give you everything you need to know, and that backfires when you go and you try to find a job. That's probably why, in America, 44% of university graduates under the age of 25 are unemployed or have to take jobs that don't require a degree. If you add that to the fact that, on average, graduates leave with $27,000 in debt, uh, the situation is very dire. I know that here in Norway, higher education is free, so that number might seem irrelevant, but it's not at all. What this high figure of tuition reminds us is that the time we spend in university is never free. That regardless of whether or not we spend physical money to attend school, we are still paying for it with our time. Four years is, at our age, a significant chunk of it. Um, if we choose to go to university, then, we have to do it deliberately. We have to go to school knowing why we're there and what we want to get out of it. We have to approach it as part of a larger educational journey. We have to be deliberate about the way we use our time in university for our future success. And colleges are really good at one thing. They're really good at preparing students for more time spent in school. What they're not really good at is preparing students for real life, and that's, that's what matters. At Uncollege, this is why we started the Gap Year program. We wanted to prepare students for real life, not just for school. Um, we actually welcomed our first cohort of fellows two weeks ago, 10 people who will spend the next year learning how to be successful personally and professionally, two things that are never covered in the classroom. I don't know why, because being personally and professionally successful is the only thing that matters when you leave the classroom. I'm really excited to see how these fellows develop and grow within the next year. But let's think ahead a little bit. What happens after a year to, someone, to a student who has left the school system? Um, I guess the best case scenario would be that they become significantly more self-directed. They increase the depth and the breadth of their experiences, and they gain a better perspective of the world around them. Now let's talk about the worst-case scenario. Um, I suppose the worst-case scenario is that after a year, the student becomes more mature, more interesting, and goes back to college and is more able to take, is more able to make use of it. Um, if you notice, so there's not a huge difference between the best and the worst-case scenarios. What I'm trying to tell you is that there's really no downside to taking a gap year. You will inevitably become a better version of yourself after that year. That's just what happens as you age. But obviously, not everyone here has 
had a chance or will be able to attend a folk high school or take a gap year. And that's okay. Um, but I want to leave you with an important shift in mindset that I think a gap year helps many students achieve. If you've taken time off from school, I'm sure that you've naturally achieved some version of this. Um, yesterday, when I arrived in Norway, I had an insightful conversation with one of the conference organizers named Marta. She had attended a folk high school, she loved her experience there, and she shared with me one key takeaway that she got. And that was her ability to distinguish between what she should do and what she wanted to do. Coming out of high school, we all know what we should do. We should go to a good university. We should graduate with a degree in something practical. We should get a good job. But how many of us have made the time to sit down with ourselves and think about what we want to do? Very few. Um, so let's practice. If everyone in the audience could close your eyes for a second, um, just for a minute, I want you to take a minute and think about a few things that you should do today. Perhaps there's an important paper you have to write before class tomorrow morning. Maybe there's a phone call you need to make before bed. Um, maybe you're really bad at watering the plants, and you really should water your plants tonight, or else they're all going to wilt. Right? It could be anything. But the point is, we have all of these shoulds lurking in the backs of our minds. Take a minute to think about the way those lists of shoulds make you feel. If you're anything like me, I feel a little bit more anxious than I did just a moment ago. Doesn't it feel like a burden? Now I want to switch gears. Um, keep your eyes closed if you can. Take a minute to think about something that you want to do today. Maybe after the conference, a long walk would really satisfy you. Perhaps you want to learn more about that concept you covered in class yesterday that really interested you. Maybe all you want to do is spend 20 minutes before bed today reading that book you checked out at the library last week, but you haven't gotten a chance to open because you've been so entrenched in your list of shoulds. Now take a moment to think about how that feels. How much more excited and motivated and inspired do you feel thinking about what you want to do? instead of what you should be doing. And this is what a gap year affords us. A gap year affords us this year of free time where we can spend doing things that we want to do, not things that our parents or our teachers or our friends tell us we should be doing. So if you are currently in university, and if your university allows for it, consider giving yourself that free time to think about what you want and what excites you. If you are a older sibling or a friend to someone who is about to enter university, encourage them to take advantage of that time. They have nothing to lose. By thinking about, sorry, by Taking time off from school, and by taking time on in real life, we can save ourselves from blindly pursuing the wrong successes. By taking a gap year or going to a folk high school, by thinking about what it is we want to do instead of what we should be doing, we can make sure that we're building lives that we actually want to lead. Thank you. <laughs>